<laughs> so the, uh, the presentation we just had was almost an enthusiastic, apart from the stunning quality. Uh, I was a bit disappointed you didn't actually call it, but anyway. Um, the interesting thing about it was it was really a consumer aspect. I want to use this device. And I'm going to just use it everywhere, and, and my IT department are going to be incredibly happy about it. Now, this presentation is mostly, it's probably not really aimed at this audience, but probably aimed, hopefully aimed at you know, people this audience work with. And it's talking mostly a lot about the, the IT departments who, let's say, have a, a higher latency to you know, the new technology, to what's happening. So, if we start back a bit as to what's this, where this, this really starts to come in, I'll, I'll go back before I come forward, is we're talking about a set of BYOs. <coughs> the, the first one most people are aware of is, is, the, is the one that lots has been written about in, in recent times, is bring your own computer. So, again, this is a, this is a, a photo of devices I found picking around my office. So, the, the standard setting that a lot of IP IT departments is, you know, here is a device. It's chosen to be a standardised device, it's chosen for reliability, it's been checked out to the nth degree. It's probably got um, a standard image on it, a standard, a standard image on it, and everyone gets the same thing. And that may be alright for a lot of people. Um, that, was, that was my ThinkPad brilliant keyboard, haven't found a better one. Um, if your IT department's handing out underpowered devices, mm, not so good. But, yeah, that's very common in a lot of, lot of places. And that's fine, people get on with it. But then along come things like this. You get sort of uh, all the uh, Ferrari driving wannabes, they want the Acer device. Lots of people, um, you know, want to speak with the take the jobs in view and they want to use Max. So this is a, a tension. So they go, oh, I've got this device, and yeah, I can kind of do my job on it, but it's not, it's not the device I want to use. For home or whatever, for my stuff, I want to be using the, uh, I want to be, be shown to be the Ferrari driving man, an IT department, less probably unless you're Ferrari, uh, ain't going to hand those out. So you then put people, some people go, well, maybe I'll, you know, I'll sometimes bring it into the office, then I've got the two laptops to carry around. Well, that's, that's not great. So normally what happens is that this tension goes on, and either they sort of smuggle into the office, have two things, until, you know, someone with enough uh, seniority has a conversation with IT and says, you know, I think that, you know, there's a here good set of technical reasons why I think my device should get on your network and you should let it up. And so after a while, the, yeah, this happens. And so the one or two devices come in and things like that. And then other people go, well, he can do it with his device, why can't I bring my device and stuff like that? So you get to the point where, do you just throw the doors open and say, yeah, okay, whatever you like, fill your boots. Bring, your, bring whatever device you like in. And that's where... I've got these to throw. Um, that's where you, the, 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 the BYOC discussion comes in. And it's, it's acknowledging the fact that the employees, employees that are expected to be a lot more flexible, are expected to do more. I mean, you, know, you don't do your own... You, know, you don't do dictation and sending up vaxes and you, know, you organise your own travel and things like that these days. So you, you do a lot more, so maybe you should be actually doing, making it easier for you to do it that way around. So what, you know, if you, if you let everyone bring your own computer, then it sounds great. You know, people are happier, they'll, uh, they'll feel happier about the company, they'll be able to do their job better. IT saves money, they don't have to hand out all these laptops. So that's, that's great. What could possibly go wrong? Well, what the normal reactions to it are, are, well... Oh, doesn't that just mean all my data is going to go out everywhere and into people's homes and onto all these devices and I can't control? Does it mean that people are going to use their, you know, use their computers and they're going to go and get all their porn, they're going to go all the dodgy sites, and then they're going to get their computers embedded and they're going to bring the office and suddenly my, my network is a mass atrocity or something like that? What if the implication being that you know you're around looking after your own laptop or whatever. What if you can't hack it? Does that mean the help desk has got to suddenly learn uh, about a whole bunch of, uh, of, of new devices? Well, to a certain extent, 
some of these situations are true even for the very lockdown environments. So it's a very rare organisation that doesn't hand out laptops, albeit the, uh, the control the control. So they have people who are uh, you know, roaming around with laptops, and even if they even if they, even if it's a highly locked down, like with the you know if you attach it to the wrong network, you can you can end up with the virus. If you uh, have a policy about whether those laptops can have data on, it's something that policies are terribly hard, terribly hard to con- terribly hard to control. And there's a you know, well-known fact of people going, well, okay, it's, it's all very locked down, do I really need to work with this document? I know I'll just uh, eat Gmail or something like that and uh, post it to myself and I'll work on it at home. You know, you know, if, you, if you're not careful, people will do things to work around IT, IT control. So if your network assumes no threats, then maybe you do have a problem with BIOC. If your network assumes no threats, then hmm, that's not a very good idea. You know? If your users don't get app access to their devices, well, yeah, okay, that's probably a device that not gonna, they're not going to enjoy using very much because there's, there's going to be stuff they can't do, a lot of things like that. Do you, do you prevent like, <coughs> you know, getting data outside? And if you do, well, how are you going to do your work? If you've got a, you're in a certain vertical where you've got a whole bunch of requirements and, and, and stuff like that, then, well, actually, you probably should have, already have tools on your, uh, on your network. You, know, you should be scanning your emails for un- un- unsuitable content and stuff like that. So we get not the full open welcome map, but you get to the point of controlled BYOC, where you have to go out and you have to talk to legal, and you have to say, well, you know, what are our liabilities in, in, in our industry? You know, what, what's what's, what's going to be the downside? Are we, are we people who can do this? Talk to security and say, is our network okay if we let a few more sort of occasional faults on it, or are we going to be, are we suffering already from this thing, or are we pretty well locked down? <coughs> which are, say, Ooh, what do we do if people leave, and, you know, what do we do if, uh, you know, we, we, we want to go and look at their, comp- their machines because we're worried about it, and things like that. So you can then say, well, nah, maybe it's not for us. But then you're back where you're on, and you have this tension then between your users, your employees, and your, and your IT department. Alternatively, you could just say, right, no, we'll use that and we'll build a policy and say, right, we're going to embrace lots of other, lots of other devices. You can look at how much money you're going to save. Say, okay, well, it costs us this much money over three years to um, you know, provide someone with a laptop. What we'll do, we'll give hmm, that much as a stipend. We'll give it to people and say, right, we'll give you this much money to go out and buy a device. You buy whatever you like, provided it conforms to our policy. And then that policy is going to say things like, like you must have a hardware contractor, because IT is not going to be interested. You're going to come to IT and say, oh, I've got a hardware problem. They're not interested. Your computer, you bought it under this system, and one of the stipulations was you had a contract. So it's a, it's a controlled thing. Review the data control policy. How, where's, you know, where is you know, it's 3 a.m., where is your data? Do you know? That sort of stuff like that. And above all, make tools available. Look at the antivirus, uh, you know, uh, your, your site contract. Make sure that it's probably one, it's probably not that much com- more complicated if you've got a site-wide license, to make sure that they can go out onto these, machi- on, onto these machines. Make sure they've got encryption so that if they, do, they can have data on that encryption somewhere that you control. Especially if it's something like, uh, you know, if you, can, if you can link that, that, that um, encryption with the, the use of the, of, of the application. I'm not sure we're going to begin so that you know you don't have to expose too much to, to things to come. And make sure those to, those that software for those tools is readily available. If you do that, and I don't, a bunch, <coughs> a bunch of my colleagues have been spent a lot of time talking to people about that, then DYOC starts to become a lot more acceptable. But what you want to say to me is stop talking about laptops. That's too so 2010. What everyone wants to talk about is the, the impact of, of devices, of our phones, come what may. Coming back to the, uh, the sensible picture, the, uh, the device of choice there is the, is, is, is the old BlackBerry, which was pretty much a lockdown device. You know, if you move through a Bears at IT, you <coughs> control, they can really sort out what you have and what has not But it's not very exciting, that one just languished in a, in a drawer. Oh, well, ironically, I, I found out recently that amongst the youth, that um, they're quite cool again. 
because they discovered that, that real real keyboards are, are, are better than tablet, better than, better than touch screens. And um, yeah, in certain circumstances, that's, that's a cool device. So, but anyway, this audience probably is probably much happier thinking about the tablet <coughs> area, arena. So, 2011, the year of tablet. There's a lot of it about. And people are really starting to say, okay, these devices are you know, at least a part of what my IT has to be. You know, people will you know, they're very compelling to use, at least a part of your experience. I tried living with an iPad as a, um, an only device for a while. It wasn't for me. I still use it. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, on certain circumstances, it's the device I want to use. But other times, I want to use this laptop or just the phone. It's one of these. Um, there's a, the, one of my colleagues is sort of fond of talking about sort of the, the snacking with the phone and eating with the tablet and dining with the laptop. We used to be all about, you know, which of the on, the, on the scorecard we had earlier is that actually, you know, which is most suitable. Sometimes one will cover multiple um, elements. So these things are becoming much, much more relevant. But for a few, if you're sitting there being from your traditional IT point of view, ah, these are a bit strange. You know, they're naturally unmanaged. They're designed, you know, very much from the consumer point of view, and they're designed, you know, they're, they're very much going to be shareable. If you try getting your, you know, get, sometimes find my iPad is impossible because it's disappeared somewhere in my house because someone else is using it. And so they are going to be shared, they're going to be used in much more, more, more circumstances and they or if you can get completely lost when you're out and about, they're much more portable. So do they open up the, some of the threats that we've seen before? Do they cause problems <coughs> with you know, your company data getting out everywhere? Well, yes and no. If you look at uh, the details of, of, of how some of these things are, you look at iOS. And you see that each app on iOS it's, it's, is designed to be self-contained. The data is designed to be self-contained. It's not, not, not cross. It's not sort of let's operate on a, on a single file system. It makes it quite easy to, to, you know, to, to encrypt some of that data. So that, that's good. That's self-contained. So you don't get sort of malware which you can go and sort of go and snoop around the, um, the OS and see what it could and affect other programs and things like that. Downside of that is that you use an app and you create some content or you know, mess around with some content then that is typically local to the device unless you're using some cloud servers. And you'll see that you know, different, apps on, uh, different apps on the tablets, they'll have connect different sort of built-in connectivity. <coughs> then they'll say, okay, you've got that, and you can either leave it as it is, or maybe it's got a, a, a Dropbox connector on one app, or it's got an email connector on the other app. And suddenly, it's 3 a.m., where is your data? Are you actually creating that problem again? So that's a, a problem. They do work well as external devices. They are sort of good for internet devices. So if you're worried about saying, well, oh, I've got these strange devices and they're coming inside my network, maybe you should have an internal outside network. So you can have a network <coughs> alternative. So wireless network inside your organization that actually is you know, only, only internet facing. But it makes it easy to connect to it. And there are some sort of standard tunnels and things like that. The good thing is, Though it's very, though it's, it's it's custom, is that there's some very good data wipe facilities for these things. So yes, again, it's a good. This is a plus. Good tip for IT. But if you're going to use it as a work tool, what are you going to do? Is it going to be you know? Are you going to have a suitable app? Or is it going to be a suitable content creation device, a content viewing device for these things? Because there's going to be apps. What are people going to use once they once they've got past the fart apps? You know, is there going to be a real business use for these things? The good news is, upside, is that they make great terminals for BDI. That's why we've been pushing, such to be pushing hard, get the receiver on as many platforms as possible. Because these things actually make very good. They're much in there. They're quite they're very good use of sort of to get back <coughs> stuff in the data center. If you're only pushing pixels, then okay, that's a that's a very good story for IT. You know, IT can go, okay, well, yeah, okay, maybe I can understand that. Maybe if, if, if my data is left in the data center. And whenever they use these things for my corporate use, they're going to use it remotely. And maybe that's not so bad. A little bit of a challenge over you know, screen format in some cases, but it's uh, remote apps is a is a very good story. Ironically, though, I said 2011 was the uh, year of the tablet. It's going to be an explosion. So we've got uh, we've got lots of Androids, we've got iOS, 
and Nirvana in the middle, Microsoft's, Rings, um, <coughs> HP, all different variants on things like that. What's going to happen, probably, or maybe, is the typical uh, uh, IT approach is going to, okay, right, we, we, we embrace the tablet and we'll go and we'll do this with iOS. It's fantastic, we, um, we know how to do it and we support the iOS. You can use an iOS tablet. Problem is, there's a plethora of tablets. And if you're not careful, you go full circle and come back to standardization. And that applies with sort of, you know, oh, we've written an app for iOS, so you can use this iOS, and it's a company app, and it's, you know, it gets our private, it gets our private, it's brilliant. I spoke to a neighbor of mine who's, um, works for a trading, works for a trading company, and he's like, it's fantastic, I can now, you, you know, do everything I want on, 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 on the iPad. I was talking to him about it, and I said, well, this is pretty good. I said, so, um, has anyone brought an Android device in yet? He went, oh yeah, someone did that last week. Have you done that? Well, we can't do that yet. So the, you have this tension, is that the, the the, the technology and the, 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 the geek factor is running faster than IT can catch up, so you have a problem. And again, things like, you know, as you probably expect me to say, receiver is a good option for that, even if it's only a bridge again. The other side of it, I'm talking about the you know, IT being concerned, and I talked about data as a As a user of these things, once you've bought into the, oh, I've, I've got, you know, I've let, IT have let me use this because I've put a data wipe solution on here. It's a good thing. But then I tend hit the button because you've lost it, uh, or you think you've lost it, and not only <coughs> does, the, does, it, does it wipe the court data, the court data, but if you're not careful, it's going to wipe all your stuff as well, which if you've just left it in the car or something like that, you can't find it. It's pretty awkward. I'll have to briefly use Skip Scott Adams' view on it. We licensed some cartoons for him to try and prove this point. So, once you assume you've got your own device, your own computer, or something like that, what do you need? You need, you need settings. So what, you've got a bunch of apps <coughs> on, you've got, you've got stuff, you've got software on your device, but actually probably in a lot of cases that's actually useless without a setting. <laughs> 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 this is going to be compulsory for all presenters to carry. <laughs> so, that be fixed in version two. <laughs> Maybe not two. <laughs> so once you've got you, you've got some software and you need to connect it into your services, and the question is how do you do that? Even now, your IT, your end users are your, are your administrators. Great, except the admin need to give, tell the end users how to do this stuff. And you have a technician here. Your IT people may not know how to configure the devices. And your end users may not understand, even just typing in a URL as error frame, quite what you do. And so increasingly you'll find there are tools out there to help that. What we've got here is the, uh, this, is, this is Apple's iPhone, config iPhone configurator. And this is the, the Citrix receiver generator. So you'll find these tools, and you'll find that it's not just that it's IT using these tools to give things to people, but you'll also find that there's a, there's a bunch of people where, you know, just small communities break out, and they go, oh yeah, no, I've got this thing here which I created using one of these magic tools, um, and yeah, IT haven't caught up with this yet because they haven't got their head around this device, but look, here you can do this. Have to be a bit careful. Just to make sure that nobody's doing sort of drive-by, um, you know, sending you to evil court with these things. But there are there are tools. If you look out for, uh, if you just search for the mobile config uh, on the internet, uh, you'll find a, a, a large number of things which is claimed to do all sorts of things. Um, you know, with my IT, IT, IT security colleagues' hat on, is that uh, these things these things look dangerous, but there are. You know, there are ways and means to improve it. So they approach them cautiously, but this is part of a, you know, a trend of making these things, this stuff work. And when we're talking about if I can control my settings, then I can control my device. And I, so, so what about the software I use to do a job? You know, if you go out and get, uh, get a device and you've got a commercial app store, then, yeah, you can choose pretty much anything. And it may do the job, things like that. If you 
Conversely, you going back to your, your, your laptop or your Mac or something like that, um, going stuff that you need to do your job for the, for the job for the enterprise, then instead of IT going, that's your app, it's fixed, it's a, there on your machine, it's fixed. So maybe you need to have the App Store context available in-house as well. And I'm hiding, 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 hiding behind Dazzle here. Or is the, you know, there are there are attempts available, you know, things things that are being done in, in several places, not just Cetera, to help build out enterprise app stores. To make the user say, okay, yeah, I understand, I've probably actually got a bit of a choice here. And then selection things, they don't have, they're not, they're not sort of full, fully under the crush of IT, uh, under the crush of IT. But they, again, it's, it's sort of like they can work in a more flexible manner. They can do, do things in the way that's suitable for them. If you we're going to, if, you, if you're coming to Synergy, you can hear me more on about that in a, in a whole talk about App Store. But I won't worry about it here. The, the nice thing, uh, if resources on, on these, uh, on these uh, devices are uh, critical, but if it's an app, it's an expensive app or something like that, you can fix these things <coughs> in with workflow. So you can get an approval mechanism, and it can be very you know, heavyweight, or it can just be like tough. There's a lot of flexibility available. OK. So after settings. You've now got your own PC, or your own, your own device, and you going to <coughs> set it up, all without help of IT. <laughs> I'm not picking up. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I've got some, not straight away. Yeah. And so, but then stuff goes wrong. So what do you do? What are you going to call? So. What's, what's the first problem you're going to do? What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to go and ask the internet. <laughs> Not without Wi Fi, you would. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's tricky. Yeah, so I should just use your date on your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So if you're not. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, but so then, you know, how are we going to. And, and a lot of people in this room, I'm sure. The first time you run, in, you run into strange things, you know, what you do is you reach, reach, for, reach for a, a browser, things like that. Now that's, that's okay. That's good. That works for a lot of things. But if the problem you've got is related to an in-house thing, you know, I can't access the such and such server from this type, of, uh, this type of device or something like that, then how are you going to solve that problem? The internet doesn't know. Well, you hope the internet doesn't know, probably. Your IT may know how to get to that from a conventional device, something that they understand. But you, you know, it, th th there's a gap. And what tends to help there is you get community stuff. And so what's in, been interesting is, if, if you, well, if you look at the forums that Citrix set up for its BYOC program, that was, some of that is all about, oh, I've got this type of device, and I'm trying to do this, and this is the solution, and you get community stuff breaking out. A lot of it is actually, oh, I've got this device and it's cooler than yours, which doesn't help. But you know, the community stuff is there, so you know, the, 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 the recommendation to IT, and it's, 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 it's hard to get a sort of package version of this. But, you know, it's like, yeah, build your community app. Get, sort of get the FAQs out there. And in, in, in the, uh, the, the, the version Dazzle that's out there at the moment, we, we put these little buttons in. And then, you know, basically they can just get connected into, into particular websites. So the idea is that you, you know, Learn is a general, all look, here's facts, and things like that. Ask will actually connect you into, um, maybe to your IT, maybe to a uh, you know, question and answers action, and share is the, oh yeah, look, I just, you know, reminds me, oh, look, I've got this stuff, I've just solved it, and it's like, oh, how do I let others know? Oh, it's just there. Make it easy to connect into this kind of mechanism. And stuff like that. that. Okay, that's, that's pretty conventional. This one's a bit more interesting. So BYO identity, what do I mean by that? Well, it means something like well, we face identity. Well, maybe that's not particularly what you want to do. The whole idea behind BYOI is to consider flexibility. So think about if you're an organisation and you have a lot of contractors coming in and out and things like that, then every time someone comes through the door, you've got to go through the process of uh, 
you know, creating accounts for them, that can be mapping them into certain, certain contexts and stuff like that, making sure when they leave those accounts, accounts are disabled and stuff like that. It's very complicated. If, you, if that contractor could bring their own identity with them, probably not their <coughs> one, but maybe if they were all coming from a certain company, if you could get, if you could get the, uh, their, your identity from a, another place, that would be good. Similarly, if, they, if you look at IT costs, for um, you know, sort of breakdown of IT costs, password management, password reset is massive. But if you then if you look at something like uh, Google, if you look at something like a Gmail, if you're going to set up a Gmail account, they've already got built in things like um, SMS password reset. Imagine setting that up for your every organisation. That'd be massive. So the theory is, and this is pretty theoretical at the moment, is that well, if you could combine this kind of thing, if you could actually say, ah, oh, okay, so I'll let outsource this stuff, but not in a, you know, I'm going to contract someone to come in and just take this stuff over. If you can use standard tools and standard identities, then that would be good. And it's, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of work being done on this sort of stuff. If you, you know, go look at the at OpenID, go look at um, SAML, go look at um, OAuth. There's a lot of technologies out there, a lot of standards that are emerging, which is going to help this stuff. And basically, well, the way it works is that the, uh, the user logs into their identity program. He wants to log into you. And you, you say, OK, well, you, you know, your identity is being provided from over here. So this would be you know, Facebook, Google, or preferably your consulting company. And their, their, their login is, 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 is redirected over here. And what comes back from that is a, is a, is a, a bundle of claims. It's a, it's a kind of big token, big binary thing. It's a big bundle of claims. And they present that to you, and you go, oh no, I've, I've, I've established a trust relationship. So you can then go, is this, is this valid? This is all cryptographically signed and stuff like that. And they go, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine, I can trust that. You, 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 in fact, if you, with, you, you get the grips all right, you, you don't even necessarily need to talk to them. And therefore, you hand off or something like that, all, all, the, all this stuff. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of work that's been done for, you know, the, the, some people here may, may already be using, may be using ADFS. Microsoft has been doing this, and I think Microsoft tried to do it on the internet with Passport. Didn't quite get it. Didn't quite get it. There's a lot of stuff flowing underneath. If you look at um, Facebook apps now, they use OAuth for the sort of delegated uh, relationship between the app and the user profile. And the user profile. So this stuff is going to increasingly come up. The tricky part about it is the effectiveness depends on the identity holder. Identity provider. So it's like you know, well, in the context of that, how, how <coughs> confident am I that this person is is really who they say that? You know, what's what's the, the burden of truth? Did they have to uh, you know prove who they were before they before they signed up your identity provider? And that's why I think initially these things are going to work more in a um, you know B two B type way. And actually, what's what may happen is that instead of just having a single identity provider, it will be in context. So your, you know, your HR or your finance department might be interested in your relationship, in, in your identity as provided by the tax man. You know, because that stuff that would that would be good. So you don't get any get any errors like that, and then you know, don't worry about you know entering national insurance numbers and making sure it's the right thing, and worrying about leakage and things like that. It could all be done. Um, so it's a straightforward. It's one to watch. The other problem is not. Uh, authentication, but authorization. It's quite straightforward to say, oh yes, he is who he says he is, um, but is he allowed to carry a Nirvana phone? And at the moment, the only way you, you might be able to do that is to sort of have a mirror account uh, in your organisation. And again, that's that's you know that's that's been done in ADFS. That's 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 fairly straightforward. So you can do your own program. There are ways within the standards which you can do that where you have um, you know, the, the, the identity providers can, in, these, in this bundle of claims, they can say, oh, this person has this role. But it's a bit, at the moment, the, the, you being able to set up something that's in your own context and being proof of part of their claims is a bit more complicated. But there are people who are working. So it's one to watch. It's an interesting one. Just a couple more. Um, this one's not really so much a consumer play as a departmental play. A lot of people in this room, it's, it's, this is an SBC gig. Um, no, a lot of people here are aware that sort of SBC's broken out in a lot of enterprises by departments going, oh, I've got a problem. 
And I, I know I can use, you know, these citrus and, and, and stuff to, to solve this problem. This is starting to happen a little bit with cloud. People go, oh, uh, yeah, all focus tie, um, and I haven't got a data center, but I've got this problem, and I've got an application I want to roll out to my own cloud. I know, I can just go and get some servers. So, you know, random search, find a, th find a few servers, bit of cloud, brilliant, got a server. That's fine. That's great. It worked really well for them. Well, I go, oh, yes, what are we going to do about this backup? Because, you know, IT takes so long to do, you know, to do to do it and add new things into the backup. I know, I know, we use cloud backup services. Again, absolutely fine. All you have to do, and all IT have to be aware of, is, you know, as IT as stewards, as distinct from IT as enforcers, is not to go, no, you can't do that. The important thing IT has to say is, right, okay, those servers you've got out in the cloud, you are, you know, protecting them appropriately, aren't you? And this, you know, cloud provider you've got out there, do you, you know, what's their multi-tenancy story? Are these, are these servers just yours, or are they sharing a, you know, they're sharing a VLAN with lots of other people who you don't know? You know, do, are they sitting next to the, uh, the biggest spam merchant in the world, and suddenly they, you know, that, that, you know, that one's going to get blocked, or that people's going to snoop around? Probably not. Lot, most cloud providers are doing this, but it's, it's a, a, an education, steward, stewardship thing. Also, cloud backup services. You know, is the stuff going to be encrypted again? You know, with 3 a.m., where is your data? It's all going to be all right. So, worrying about, you know, oh, in communication, up to, up, up to the cloud, you make sure you're not, you know, leaking holes back and backwards and forwards to, uh, to your enterprise. So looking at uh, cloud bridges and proper education for these things. Last one, just a minor one, but I, my security guy asked me to put this one in, is the, yeah, we were talking about the, uh, <coughs> the, the, the issues of connectivity. And, three, and 3G, so Android hotspots, MiFi's, things like that. Brilliant, again, and I've, some SMDs, I was talking to a, a, a guy who was interesting about throwing away the broadband, it's going to go through completely 3G. Okay. Yeah. So the three of them in an office, they go, we'll, 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 we'll try this. And they keep the broadband connection, because he thinks he might be doing a bit of work on this. Anyway, but the key here, again, IT stewardship, is. Make sure you're not causing a bridge. If you carry your MiFi around, connect it to 3G and things like that, you bring them up to being there. Oh, I'll get some speed out of this, I'll plug it in. Then, so Alex is sucking his thumb, sorry. The microphone, please. Pardon? Can you use the microphone, please? Sorry? The microphone! <laughs> 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 I'll be finished, thanks so for watching. Uh, I don't like you to use the microphone. <laughs> That's me, Brent. Uh, yeah, so just beware, this isn't providing a bridge into the enterprise. So, that, so I've done, done the job. So that. that was about it. There's a lot more of these things occurring, but it's, it's kind of hard to summarise them as a BYO. Um, so that's about it. And we have six minutes if anyone wants to disagree. I think the interesting thing with getting users to bring in their own kit people see the headline, <clears throat> we don't necessarily have to support that device anymore. So that sounds really cool, yeah, and good people can bring in whatever device that they want. One of the reasons for standardizing was that then it is easy to support. Yeah. So the amount of time for your help desk people and the punter was short. Yes. And that never really gets brought into the cost model of a bring your own computer. It is, we will give you X thousand pounds for your laptop, and now you're on your own. But now each person is their own IT department. Yeah. And you have to put a massive amount of infrastructure at the back in order to support that IT department <coughs> of one. Yeah. So all of those economies of scale are lost. Not all of them, because some of them do come mm. down to... And yeah, the, the key is you don't want to be blocked with the person doing their job. Doing their, doing their job. Yes, you absolutely. absolutely. You want them to be efficient. You know, you've really done this is so they can be more efficient. You don't want to block. So yeah. So one of the things is you know, as I say, the you know, when you when you pull this, you've given the money. Stipulate if it's a hardware fault, you've got a solution in place yourself. You know, you've got your your Dell or your Mac, you know, your Apple or whatever um, contract. Yes, I think that's a really important point of positive part of sorting these things out. So if it's a hardware issue, there's someone to deal with it without having to go to someone who says, uh, oh, I don't understand it. Oh, and the other thing is, uh, certainly the, 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 the interesting thing that Citrix did, 
was uh, when they brought, rolled out the BYOC program. A lot of people went, yes, please, I'll do it, I'll go to BYOC. And they went, right, have you got a content laptop? He said, yes, well, bring it back. And there's now a big pool of loaner laptops. Yeah. So, yeah, being able to... And, and yeah, we don't, you, don't, you don't imagine that um, you're going to have a, uh, you know, a pool of pool of atrixes and a pool of iPads and the things like that. <coughs> well, there's some people who are actually rubbing, put back in of iPads. But yeah, no, it is a big problem. And I think the biggest one is the how do I do certain apps and things like that. And that's why things like the community, how do I connect stuff in? That's why the community stuff is important. That's why doing things in a more consumer way, because <coughs> finding out that in the also on the internet, it may not be how to get to my specific server, but there's probably someone who used an iPad to get into a similar device type device. You know, you're, you're, you're starting to do things in a uh, crowdsourcing pattern, if you like. So yeah, I, I, it is a real concern, and I, you know, I think you have to do these things with your eyes open. But it's not, I don't think the problem is quite as bad as it could be. Anyone else? See, it's Andrew's role to disagree with people today. <laughs> so, uh, anyone else who's presenting? I've just, just, just moulding on, and quite frankly, it's horrendous. I just thought I'd see one there. Any other presenter? Could you, you know. what, is, what is the, the experience of Citrix with this by your own computer? It was at the end positive or the Really positive so far. It's, uh, uh, again, it's the, um, you know, people have gone out and they've they, 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 interesting sort of collecting statistics because it's a sign up program. Out of interest, connected statistics on what people are using. And it's kind of like, I think it's like about 50% of Macintosh. So it's been, it's, been, it's been very good because we have a bigger you know, knowledge base of, of Macs now in the company. Um, and I know engineering has, has, has found that great because they, you know, they've, 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 got, they've got a community to go and ask questions of and things like that. Whereas previously we had a, sort of, you know, a small group of core Mac people who were very, very technical and very, very engineering. It's never a good idea to let engineers do you know, product design and things like that. And now we have a much more... We focus on this, but what role of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and, and the, it's been a, sort of a lot of people who have looked at it and gone, uh, oh, this is really good, because, uh, you know, I've actually got, I've got a better device. So actually, I'm not only doing my job, I can do it quicker in some cases. Or, you know, they're, 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 they're happier doing it. it has what been, is percentage of people which do this by your own? I can't remember. No, it's probably 10%, maybe. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. It's not relevant for everyone. Okay. Um, and the program that Citrix is offering is only really laptop oriented. You know, so we're not offering money for you know tablets and stuff like that. There's a lot of people carrying and how tablets much money? Is it? I think it was. <laughs> It's twenty four hundred dollars over three it, years. It was twenty one hundred over three years. Yeah. yeah. And that's something like uh, seventy five percent of their the estimated cost yeah. for support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, you know, there's a saving that's the problem to the program. Do you find many people put their own money into buy something better yes, than the Yes, lots of people are doing that. You know, they're going, oh, you know, I've really wanted this, I aspire to this device, and it's a bit expensive. But actually, if I've got, you know, two-thirds of the cost cut off, yes, I'll have that device. And it makes them happier. And it's probably a better device, you know, so it probably works a bit better. So many people go the other way and buy the absolute cheapest device and pocket the rest of cash. Yeah, found many people who did. Yeah, no, it's, it's a realistic, but you never know. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Have, have you found um, organisations having problems with, um, say, when employees bring in their own device and, say, if, uh, they bring in a nice new Apple or uh, iPad or whatever they happen to be using, that um, with kind of corporate IT moving at a slower pace than consumer IT, and especially cloud-based um, setups for project management, for um, you know, Google Docs or whatever else, that people end up bypassing their own company provided mm -hmm. facilities and then within teams saying, well, let's use uh, a free Google Docs account and we'll start sharing info. And before right. you know it, uh, your data starts to reside outside of the organization because yeah. the free services are actually more <laughs> flexible as far as the employees are concerned. Well, the, the more locked down IT is and the more resistant IT is to this, the more likely that is to happen. Whereas if IT is willing to sort of say, okay, now we understand these things are going to happen, these, these devices are going to happen, and be aware of it, you know, and give good solutions. So, you know, obviously for Citrix, you know, remote apps, remote, you know, remote desktops and things like that, because there's a lot of flexibility there, and you get very good access to sort of, you know, 
figuring out how that's going to work for your sort of particular particular problems. But it's, yeah, no, I, I, we haven't found that, but it, yeah, it, it is a risk, and the more closed IT is going to be to this process, the more likely that's going to happen. And the more stealthy it will be to happen. So, you know, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen without stewardship, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more risky. But I suppose if you've got employees who are coming into an office space, they're bringing in a device, and they're able to actively work on um, <coughs> applications, cloud-based applications, outside of their own network, um, that you're, you're actually enabling that to go on as a part of a normal work but day. But you are, but then you might... <laughs> but, 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 there is a case that they might have been doing that anyway. With your, you know, with the with the machine, they come in and sit down. If it's a desktop machine and things like that, as a group, they might decide, oh, you know, it's a bit plain. We get, you know, we're, we're waiting for the SharePoint site to be set up. I know. In the meantime, we'll use Google Docs. That's without any of the BYOC. You know, it's it's a it's a, you know, a, there's a lot of stuff out there that you can use. I think it's 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 a real problem for IT, and I don't know how I don't know whether. You can, or you know, what you do about solving these things, other than education, and, you know, or completely locking everything down, and then people can't use the internet, which is self-evident. You, you can't do that because everybody's just going to sit and laugh. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Then they're going to go back to that BYO on things, things like that, and they're just going to be right 3G into everything. Like that. So it's it's one of those things. I think I think it's it's, it's interesting for IT. I think it's really is that because they've got a whole new set of. Of challenges, but also, you know, if they're embracing it, if they're providing, they're sort of providing these services, talking to people about it, and saying, you know, yeah, okay, go ahead and do that, but before you do it, I want to make sure that data is encrypted or something like that, and then here's a service we, we're rolling out. You can always build a Faraday cage around your office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, in some, you know, in a, in a certain sort of band, you know, design method, you know, polish it up. Right. I think Alex is out of time. He did put 70 minutes briefly on it. All right, the end. Thank you.